ابھی تک جاگ رہے ہیں پکا صبح سے آپ نے ٹرینڈ دیکھا ہوگا ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ واٹ فیلیو نیا فیشن نہیں ہے کوئی اٹس دا فیکٹ رائٹ سو میں آپ کو پہلے سے بتا دوں بیکاز دیٹس سیم تھنگ دیٹ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ از ویل فیلیو نہیں ہم لوگوں نے کاپی نہیں کی ہیں ایسا کچھ نہیں ہے کہ رات کو ہم سب لوگ اکٹھے بیٹھے تھے یار کیا کریں گے اگلی صبح کو جا کے فیلیو 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 نہیں نہیں نتھنگ آف دا شارٹ دا ریزن وائی آئی تھنک دس از کمنگ اپ اگین اینڈ اگین از بیکاز اٹس دا فیکٹ بینگ این آنٹرپرنر ہیونگ اے اسٹارٹ اپ ناٹ ایزی ایٹ آل I was just having a conversation with these gentlemen over here and I was telling them that it takes a lot of work and blood and sweat and tears to look like an overnight success. So that is why the reason, uh, that's the reason behind uh, all of the entrepreneurs coming up here and talking about something or the other which went badly for them. So um, I certainly hope that from our experiences, you actually learn a bit or two because um, You truly need to understand. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, Google, all of these guys, how long do you think it took them to get where they are? Right? So, let's say Instagram comes to us and says, Oh, why? We have made an Instagram app for two years. After two I'm a billionaire. That's not going to happen. How many of you guys have played Angry Birds? Do you know that that company was about to go bankrupt? Yeah? And that was the last straw. Akhri chance tha, unhoni kaha ke, okay, let's give it another shot. And finally they made it. Uh, same thing goes for new, uh, other people as well. But, oh, I'm up, so, yeah, again. Completely different topic. You have not heard this before. We're talking about failure. Right. Yeah. And this is a fact, huh? We're not making this up. So, let's start. So, my name is Fezan Lahari and I'm an addict. Yep. I'm addicted to a drug called entrepreneurship. Yeah. And trust me, I mean, I'm, hear me out. So there are good drugs and then there are bad drugs. The good drugs help you solve a problem. The bad drugs, they cause problems. But the good drugs being used in ways that they're not meant to be used in can also cause problems, really. I call entrepreneurship a drug because this is all I seem to be thinking about, literally. I eat, sleep, and dream about the next thing I want to do, the next idea I want to try out, uh, the next challenge I'm going to face, and the next failure. The next failure. Failure is highly underrated, I think because failure is bad, right? I mean, who here wants to fail? I don't think anybody would, because all of us want to succeed. But the fact of the matter is that that's not always true. I mean, so today, it's about starting up the right way. The whole event is about that. Because right is good, wrong is bad. The light, it's good, but is the darkness bad? I think it's the darkness that makes you appreciate the light. Days and nights go hand in hand, right? So it's one that makes you want and achieve the other. So why is it that we only celebrate success? You need to understand that these are two sides of the same coin, success and failure. And failure is actually the true measure of value of what you're trying to achieve. So unless you fail, you don't really know what you will be uh, achieving when you succeed. So a few weeks ago, I was reading an article by a gentleman called Ash Moria. He is the creator of The Lean Canvas, wrote a few books. And it had something in it which I found to be so amazingly profound that I actually sat and thought about it for a few minutes. It had a quote in it from a book called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And this was the quote. There is an art to flying, rather a knack. Its knack lies in learning to throw yourself at the ground 
and miss. Clearly, it is the second part, the missing, that presents the difficulties. Now, this could seem like a very weird thing to say, but imagine the missing is what? Success? Here's what Ash said. We spend so much time trying to miss failure that we fail to realize that failing is a necessary precondition of breakthrough. Let me repeat that. Failing is a necessary precondition for breakthrough. Makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, it's only when you're uh, faced with unexpected situations where you learn something new. I mean, usually if you were to be going in a step-by-step -step way to achieve success, you wouldn't learn anything new. And that's a fact. So, I think it's safe to say that from success, you earn, and from failure, you learn. But if that's true, and if failing is what teaches you new ways of achieving success, then failure is the teacher. So how come we don't celebrate it? We need to think about that. So, I told you in the beginning, I mean, the introduction said that I've been doing this for what, 14 years now? And in the 14 years of me being on this drug, I've failed numerous times, trust me. So I've had failures in all shapes and sizes throughout this time. And the thing is that in the beginning when I started off, I was so adamant on being successful, I did not even plan for failure. So when I was met with failure, I was ill-prepared for it. I was surprised. I had never even prepared for it, so, you know, I was, here I was uh, completely laser focused on being successful, that when I was met with failure, I did not know how to react. I did not know what to do with it. I was so ashamed by it, and I was so embarrassed by it, that I tried to avoid it completely. I tried to sweep it under the rug, uh, swerve around it, hide it, not even talk about it. And I was so ashamed of it, that I forgot to even take away a lesson or two from it. Yeah. And the thing is that I actually did not see, uh, learn any lesson from this. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> because I was met with this enemy of mine again and again, repeatedly throughout the years. And every which time, I did not want to talk about it. And I, draw a, I drew a blank in my life. I never failed. No. Why? Because I was completely pumped up about being successful the next time. See, the thing is that we are so focused on success that we completely ignore the teacher along the way. Who's the teacher? Failure. Yeah. Later on, I completely changed. I understood that failing is necessary for me. And I wore my ba uh, failures like badges of honor, like battle scars. Because trust me, failing does not show that you failed it also shows experience. The same way that success does. That's a weird part. Because you need to understand that, you know, oh, first of all, trust me, I mean, you need to be more successful than of a failure all the time because maybe you just suck at it later on, right? You need to understand that. Um, but again, failures show experience. And these battle scars, they actually show people that you met with a great teacher along the way. And if you're smart enough, if you're really, really smart, you've sat down with him and you've asked him a few questions about all the wrong turns that you took while starting up the right way. So if you want to start up the right way, be ready to fail. Be ready to celebrate all the failures just as you celebrate the successes. You need to understand that. This is a quote that even Barker had posted, and this is by Thomas Edison. He failed 10,000 times while trying to perfect the light bulb. And when he was asked about his failure, he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that it won't work. And do you know why it's so important for us to celebrate failure? It's because the alternate is that you just might give up, and we can't. Another quote by Thomas Edison is, I have, uh, but, wait, it's not working. Okay. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. 
the most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Now, if I were to actually take all of what I've said here and put it together, it would be in the form of a poem. Now, I'm not the kind of guy that reads poetry a lot, but this one poem, I love it. And I read it almost every few weeks because I truly believe that it summarizes everything that I've said here and it summarizes maybe everything this event could potentially be about. And I'd like to share it with you. So bear with me. This poem is called If by Rudyard Kipling. The message in this poem was for, I believe, his son or somebody else, but I think it rings true for all of us. So I'll try to do it justice. If. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating or, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, if you can walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it and, which is more, you will be a man, my son. Thank you very much.